Today, I'm near the water for not just the sights, but also the sounds. Two years ago, a unique artist burst onto the US music scene and has not left our favorite playlist since. Her songs are both reflective and lighthearted, and infused an eclectic mix of sounds bringing in fans equally diverse. From dedicated guy followers to grandparents to young new listeners converted by just one song. We're here to see you now. I love her music because she always puts me in a good mood. I'm into you now, so her music and everything. So I, I follow her, seen her in Pomona at the Glass House. Hey guys, Morgan Lindsay here at beautiful Marina Del Rey, pre-show for Malaysian crossover artist Yuna. And you know, we're going on a little bit of a girl date and I hear she's just about ready, so let's go catch up with her. In 2012, you were introduced to like the mainstream US and we were like, Yuna, this girl's uh, awesome. But I want to know, what were you doing prior to that, like musically? In Malaysia, uh, you know, I kind of did the whole singer-songwriter thing for a yeah. couple of years and I was performing at small local cafes and like independent gigs. I think about five years ago, you know, I had a lot of English music that was not going anywhere in Malaysia. Yeah. And I wanted to find out if I could, you know, maybe explore other platforms. Coming out here was one of the things that, you know, I thought of doing. So you were always writing songs. It wasn't like, I'm going to be a songwriter. It was just kind of something for free time. At the time, it was just, you know, something that I enjoy doing. It was yeah. a hobby, kind of. I remember I was just recording songs in my bedroom yeah. with like a really cheap microphone yeah. and knowing that no one's going to hear you know, yeah. this stuff. So after that, my friends started listening and they started passing. Gosh, it was so, so weird good. because at the time, you know, it wasn't really like how, you know, people are sharing music through SoundCloud. Right yeah. Now. Intentional. Yeah. Back then, it was manually just trans like CDs yeah. like, passing around. You know, oh, listen to this. My yeah. friend wrote this, and it was like that before. Somehow, it got like bigger and bigger. You were talking about the indie scene starting in it. Is that something that's big in Malaysia? Is that like the dominant genre? I remember, like ten years ago, you know, I didn't even know like kids were doing their own independent thing. Yeah. And um, I started hanging out with a lot of musicians, and kids were just like forming their own bands and recording, cutting their own album and, um, you know, organizing their own gigs. So yeah. it was really exciting. It was really refreshing because I thought, you know, at the time I thought, oh, okay, well, um, maybe if you want to be an artist, if you want to make music, the yeah. only way to go is to just like yeah. make a record with a recording label, you know, get, yeah. get signed. But um, I... You know, I was one of those kids who were just like writing their own stuff yeah. and uh, it was it was a lot of fun and I kind of just like carried on, you know, writing and producing with my friends. And here you are. Are you an only child? I am. How do you oh, because I am one. Ah! <laughs> what are some of your influences for your music? And I love lullabies. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And I must know who inspired that song or was that just something uh, well, that kind well, of came together from different? Thing. Yeah, well, Lullabies was a song I wrote uh, for my first album mm -hmm. after I moved out here. Um, you know, I was really missing home a lot. Mm -hmm. I was missing everybody, my grandmother, my grandfather, Aww. my parents, my family, you know. So I wanted to write something really, really sweet and yeah. emotional. And um, Lullabies was just like this song that I came up with, you know. Yeah. And, um, there's a, it's really, you know, there's something really special about that song. Yeah. Like, I, you know, a lot of people love it. I enjoy performing it every time. It's every very day. melancholy, but this at the same time, like, I don't feel sad after. I feel, like, oh, yeah, cool. happy, and there's, like, a little bit of hope and faith. And Thank you. What has been the best part about touring? The best part about touring is just seeing your fans, your fan base, like, grow. Yeah. I wasn't groomed to be an yeah. artist, you know. I was, you know, like a really good kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I tried to get good grades and, 
And I, I wanted it for myself as well, you yeah. know, not just to like please people. I wanted it for myself Didn't as well. Didn't you go so. to law school? I did. So, okay. yeah. So that, yeah, those so. are <laughs> the kind of things that I wanted to do. Like, yeah. oh, I'm going to go to law school, see how I'm going to, you know, do in law school. But things I feel like, you know, like you have to like satisfy yourself and yeah. be proud of yourself because that's one thing that n no one can take it away from you, you know, so yeah. Date is over now. <laughs> So you have your show to actually get to. I wish I could keep you forever and we could be oh, I'm so excited to see you do your thing on stage. You, Yuna has the type of genuine talent that's recognized and understood whether you live on an island, in the country, city, or suburbs. And all we have to do to enjoy it is press play. Next up, you asked for him, so we got him. Jay Park is on East Meets Morgan. Today, I'm meeting with Spika, one of the hottest up-and-coming girl groups from Korea, as they make a stop in the U.S. to premiere their first English-language single, I Did It. Female empowerment, big band pop, and hot bodies? What's not to like? Their schedule was packed, but lucky for me, I got to spend the day with them, getting fitted at local fashion shows.